Good evening. I am, it's a pleasure to welcome you all here tonight, our audience here and also everyone that is listening to us live on the web. Um, Tana Press and the Jazz Studies Program at the Mead Witter School of Music at the University of Wisconsin-Madison is pleased to present the fourth year of the Tandem Press Friday Jazz Series. And the series is made possible by the generous support of the Brittingham Fund. And the live streaming is brought to you by Audio for the Arts in conjunction with DA Productions. And this program could not happen without Johannes Wallman, the John and Carolyn Peterson Chair in Jazz Studies, and his colleagues John Schaefer, Jonathan Greenstein, Nick Moran, and Les Thimig. I also want to thank the students that are playing here tonight. Um, they're incredible. We couldn't do this without them. And tonight we will be featuring the Jazz Standards Ensemble and the Blue Note Ensemble, both directed by John Schaefer. Enjoy. Well, thank, thank you very much. I'm John Schaefer. Normally I uh, do the Jazz of Standards Ensemble, but Johannes is on sabbatical this year, so I've taken over his Blue Note Ensemble tonight. So fortunately or unfortunately, I'm here doing both groups. So I hope you enjoy them. <clears throat> They're both very well prepared. They're going to do some really nice music. The Jazz Standards group is primarily based on looking at those 100, 150 standard tunes that every player should know and having fun doing them but getting to know them. And so we have five tunes for you tonight that are all part of the standard jazz repertoire, and, and I hope you will enjoy them. So we have an interesting instrument here, in case you don't know that it's not a tenor saxophone. <laughs> it's a cello, but it serves as my tenor. But she's great, so hope you enjoy this. Our first tune is a very well-known tune from what they call the post-bop era or the hard-bop era by Bobby Timmons called Monin.
told you she sounds just like a tenor saxophone, you know. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. This next tune is a well-known Miles Davis tune. Much faster, much more upbeat. This is a tune entitled Four. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, thank you very much. So that was a change of tempo. We're going to change this up one more time. Uh, in the late 40s, early 50s, particularly in the West Coast, we started to see quite an infusion of Latin influences or Latin American influences. It's not really what we today call Afro-Cuban jazz, but it was Latin jazz and that it continued to be in the traditional American jazz style, but with a little bit of Latin rhythms. This is a tune that most jazzers know. It's called by Lee Morgan, famous horn player. It's called Siora.
Thank you very much. Um, just in case you're wondering, it's not normal for professors to play with their students, but I love playing with these kids. We don't always get enough people for all, all the instruments, and because I happen to be a bass player, I'm the one that gets stuck without a student bass player. But <laughs> partway through the semester, I found out my tenor saxophone player has been studying the bass. So for the last two tunes, I'm going to turn this over to Meredith, and she'll show you that she's not only a good tenor cello player, but a good bass player, too. So let's welcome her to this day. Okay, the next tune that we're going to play is called Just Friends, and it's made famous by Chet Baker. Um, Elaine Elias has a version that we're kind of following here.
All right, thank you guys. And the last tune that we're going to play is called On Green Dolphin Street, and we're going to play it in the style of Lionel Hampton.
Thank you all very much. Let's a big welcome for the Jazz Standards Ensemble. David on the trumpet, Jacob on the saxophone, Sean on the guitar, Nathan on the drums, and on both the cello and the bass. Meredith, thank you. Please stay around. We have another exciting group for you in about 15 minutes, so turn it over. During the intermission, we hope that you will view the show that's up in our gallery right now. It's our latest exhibition titled Allison Sar, Printmaker. And also feel free to stroll through the studio and see all the prints that are in progress in there. And for those of you at home, there will be an interview on upcoming events at Tandem. And as a reminder, we are also open um, daily during the week and noon to four on Saturdays now. And then we'll see you in about 15 minutes. Oh, I'm Audrey Martinovich, standing in for uh, Buzz Kemper today, and I'm down in the Tandem Press Gallery, and I have our curators with me, uh, Sona Pastel Donishkar and Mishka Lewis, and they are going to tell us a little bit about uh, some of this uh, exhibit that we are seeing in here by artist Allison Saar. So first of all, thank you for being here with me today. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, you know, we have fun every month. <laughs> it's great. Um, so we heard a little bit of jazz upstairs, or we, you know, we're taping this a little bit in the past, so you guys are here hearing some jazz, we will hear it in the future. Um, but before we get to uh, the second half of our show here, um, I know that Allison has kind of been uh, an artist here working with you in the past. You've had a, a good relationship she's got with Tandem Press. What can you tell us about her? Yeah, so Allison first came to our studio in 2014 um, to create limited edition fine art prints at uh, Tandem Press. She's an LA-based sculptor, um, and she's been working for a um, number of years um, and she, her work is collected by most of the major um, museums in the US and around the world um, and yeah we met her at the Southern Graphics Council uh, Council International um, Conference in 2013 I believe mm -hmm. and invited her to come to the press at that point um, and she uh, accepted the invitation and came to work with us so uh, we've had her three times now wow. since 2014 um, we do have a, a great working rela relationship with her um, she's a lovely person and a, a really amazing artist so we feel very uh, lucky to have her as part of the tandem family mm -hmm. that's awesome and uh this next week is actually the 2019 sgc um printmaking conference again and she's actually being honored with the um this year's lifetime achievement and wow. printmaking award and so we are that's really awesome. really happy that she is being um, honored in that way she absolutely deserves it as yeah. you will see um at this show her printmaking work is amazing um and so we wanted to align this exhibition kind of along with the exhibition she's having yeah. in texas where the conference is happening Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So then did she uh, start off as a sculptor and then move into printmaking or kind of do a little bit of both all the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's yeah. like Sona mentioned, she's primarily a sculptor and she does yeah. a lot of wood carving. And so when it came to uh, making prints, it translated really easily because woodblock carving is exactly. a really popular um, printmaking technique. So actually behind you, you can see uh, three woodblocks that she carved to create the print on the end of the wall down there. Um, so it's, it's nice, you know, and in a setting like this, we can pull out blocks that we've kept for educational purposes and show not only the final artwork, but also kind of the process of exactly. how you get from a block of wood carved down in different um, ways to then the final image that's yeah. printed yeah. on a material. And, and this piece is printed on both paper with fabric included into it. Okay. Um, so as a, a sculptor, Allison's really interested in material and how yeah. different materials add not only visual um, element to the work, but also conceptual and emotional mm -hmm. content. Yeah. And so that piece is printed on paper, but then it has a really thin layer of muslin um, overlaid over it. And it's the muslin was sh found um, by like a quilt that she, you know, came across. She collects oh, used fabrics, fabrics a yeah. lot, mm -hmm. and it's just so worn and used that it's it's basically translucent, and so you can see the image through it. It's kind of like oh, a wow. operates as a shim. Yeah, and I see that looks to be kind of a theme through some of these pieces. There's a lot of kind of a three dimensionality to mm -hmm. it, even though a lot of these are just two dimensional. Um, and then there is some like the one right behind us here uh, that you know the use of fabric and just like in this case it's hair, but um, um, that kind of motion and that, that see-throughness that adds a really interesting texture mm -hmm. and adds some depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seeing yeah. that all around. Yeah, and I just want to point out, so the, yeah. the, the woodcuts, um, the blocks that we have here um, in 
the exhibition were actually carved by Allison. So sometimes when artists come work with us in the studio, they don't necessarily do the carving, but because she is comfortable using woodworking tools and because she's a sculptor, um, she's the one who actually went in and, and carved the blocks. So we, we could hear the tools from upstairs in the curatorial yep. area, kind of wondering what was going on down there, but we heard the sound, we knew Allison was down there with she's the, in the her blocks. She's so. down yeah. there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. So uh, as we first come into this room, there are uh, three portraits along the wall. Um, we see this big piece over here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of empowerment that I'm kind of getting in these images and like th these kind of postures of people. Um, what can you tell us about some of these themes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I just sorry to put you on the spot there. No, it's, it's, a a, <laughs> it's a great question. It's a great question, and it's a great observation yeah. because Allison is definitely trying to elude that kind of emotion in the stances of the figures in her work. Um, so a lot of her work deals with um, different issues that are related to racism, um, along with sexism and ageism. You know throughout the current stat or political status in the US, but also historical. Mm -hmm. And so some of the pieces that you'll see in this show um, relate to a series of work that she's been um, working on for a couple of years now that are kind of looking at water and how um, African Americans have been, you know, gravitated around um, bodies of water or how mm -hmm. different events, including water, have shaped their experience. So um, these pieces over here are related to the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 and how the communities that lived you know, near the Mississippi River were completely displaced um, at this time. And so you know, the figures are piling up their belongings on their head to try to you know, save as much as possible. Um, and then actually the piece right behind Sona that we were just looking at, this piece is titled Deluge. So again, it's you know water related mm -hmm. and the woman has her hair kind of flipped over yeah, her head, like as in she's mm -hmm. mourning the loss of, of you know possessions lost or mm -hmm. possibly family people. And, and people yep. as well. Yep. Um, and then this piece, uh, Backwater Blues, is also related to that. And so, you know, these people are shown in the midst of this trying event um, mm -hmm. and catastrophe but you know they're looking back at the viewer and kind of not in defiance of what's happening but just in resilience mm -hmm. like she's not trying to to paint these pictures as victims but right. as you know strong people that are going to yeah. make it through despite these horrible circumstances yes yeah. exactly yeah i do see a lot of um strength and kind of like somberness mm -hmm. uh, in their Absolutely. postures and in the in the colors and some of these mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. um and i do like the the bit of like culture that's reflected like we do see people from these areas like you know carrying things on their heads and mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting kind of like mash of all of these different yeah. elements mm -hmm. and the male figure in particular in this uh this uh pair here it's also a reference to atlas um, mm -hmm. So the weight of the world on, on this man's shoulders, it's, you know, his belongings are on his shoulder. So again, there's, you know, a lot of, uh, um, there's a lot going into the one piece. Um, you know, at first it just looks like a figure carrying things, but there's, you know, many layers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Allison will often reference either yeah. Greek mythology yep. or yep. other folk, you know, uh -huh. folklore, folklore and yep. stories that have been passed down, you mm -hmm. know, in different cultures. Um, so there's definitely, I mean, her work, is very striking and seems immediate mm -hmm. um, as being these very powerful portraits, but then once you look at them closely and look at the symbolism that she includes in them, especially in context of the rest of her work, you see these kind of narrative mm -hmm. folklore stories kind yeah. of come through, which just makes her work that much more rich and enticing. Yeah, exactly. and again, you know, the surfaces that she's choosing to print on with these ones, again, this pair, these are vintage seed sacks and feed sacks that she brought oh, with her really? to, to mm -hmm. print on, and those are um, what were used to to plug the the, um, the holes and the levees and, and um, you know, different areas along the Mississippi River Delta in the, during that flood in 1927. Wow. So, you know, the fabric also means something. Yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just each little element mm -hmm. is just a, not other part of the story to yeah. make it a complete yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are, uh, I, I want to ask each of you, what is your favorite uh, piece in this room? If you had to pick one or like oh, six, gosh. I, don't <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> oh. work, all of her work is so amazing. Um, geez. Yeah, I think, I, I'm not going to say it's my favorite because right, it's, yeah. her, all of her work is really amazing, but the one piece that I've been kind of stuck on recently yeah. is um, Black Bottom Stomp, which is the three that are hanging over there. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think 
I like this piece not only because of the gesture of the woman in the in the image, um, the different fabrics that Allison used, um, but it's also kind of an underdog when viewed against the rest of mm -hmm. her work. I think mostly just because of the color palette, because it's yeah. a little darker. Mm -hmm. It's overlooked, you know, often if if it's a busy situation and people, you know, are kind of rushing through, um, which is unfortunate because it's. It's really intricate and beautiful and um, has this really nice, quiet power to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, as Allison likes to use different found materials in her work, we do a lot of what we call varied additions with her. So in printmaking, you know, you have these wood blocks, which essentially give you the opportunity to create multiple impressions of the same image, which mm -hmm. creates an addition of prints. Right. And they typically will all be identical. Um, but in case, in Allison's case, because she prints on these found materials that are not like all white pieces of paper, right. you know, the fabric lends itself to the image. Um, and so you can see in these pieces, the different patterns of the fabric that are printed out show up through the image. Mm -hmm. And so each one is a little bit different, even mm -hmm. though the printed element stays the same. And so these are three out of the varied edition of 18 that mm -hmm. were made from those wood blocks. Um, so I just I just love the the difference between each yeah. of each of them. Yeah, and I, I think that you're right. Like they do look like they belong as a collection together. But mm -hmm. even you know from 15 feet away, I can still see like the individual elements, like the background, the colors are slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, it doesn't have a very bold contrast in colors. Mm -hmm. Like the pieces kind of eat to the right. immediate right. side yeah. Yeah. have. So I do see what you mean. But those yeah, those are beautiful. I do mm -hmm. like those. Yeah. You, Sona. Yeah. Um, now that you had time cool. to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I can't say that I have a favorite, sure. but one that has sort of stuck with me is one that's around the corner. It's called Is You Is or Is You Ain't, and it's a print that we did with her um, a year and a half ago or so for our um, collector's program called Partners in Prints. So the, the print itself is a really fantastic um, representation of, a, of a, a person, and it's the name references... Um, uh, gender fluidity. Allison is, uh, she's um, very light-skinned African-American. A lot of her work is about the experience that she's had where people have assumed that she's white um, oh, sure. throughout her lifetime. And so this piece, you know, it, it, the, the title refers to, you know, it can refer to a couple different things. And I think it's just a really um, powerful mm -hmm. representation of this person. Um, so I, I, I think it's very uh, a very current um, thing that a lot yeah. of people are, you know, um, realizing at this point, you know, in time. So I think it's a really excellent piece. I also love that it was printed by our graduate student under the oh, wow. um, yeah under the guidance of our master printers. Mm -hmm. So it was um, Elizabeth Yants, um, who was our graduate yeah. student a few years ago. Um, so I love the piece for many reasons. <laughs> Very <laughs> yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that you're right. That is a current theme now where everyone's like questioning the boxes that they mm -hmm. were traditionally Absolutely. kind of right. once put into. Yeah. So, you know, is you or is you ain't, it's, yep. you know, yep. well, that box doesn't even have to really be there. Yep. Think yep. About yep. It. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, um, can you tell us how long uh, this exhibit will be displayed? Oh, yes, it, it's up until April 6th. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, so yeah, yes. April 6th, we've, April got, 6th. we've got some time for you mm -hmm. to come check it out. Uh, it should be up then for the next uh, Tandem Press concert that you guys can come and uh, yeah. watch in person next time. Um, but we better get back to the music. So Sona and Mishka, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. And now back to the Tandem Press Jazz Series. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. I just want to introduce quickly the Blue Note Ensemble, which is directed by John Schaefer. Thank you. 
Welcome back. You're listening to the Blue Note Ensemble. Just a little bit of background. Uh, this is all about the music of John Coltrane. This group, every semester, takes a different famous Blue Note recording artist. And I have to give a caveat. As Blue Note was one of the biggest and most reputable jazz labels. John Coltrane only recorded one album on Blue Note in his entire career. But I love John Coltrane, and I wanted an excuse, and one's enough. So he certainly fits within the genre. Uh, so um, again, this is he, John Coltrane as a composer. Most of us know him as a performer, certainly one of the most notable uh, mid-jazz performers. But he composed quite a lot. Most of his pieces were not performed very much at all outside of his own realm. But so we, over this year, we're doing 10, ten tunes that, that were all his compositions. This was one of them. You can say, take something like a simple blues and turns it into something kind of fancy and special. So every one of the arrangements the band will do tonight is the arrangement that was done exactly as it was recorded by Coltrane on his, on his CDs. And so um, this is a tribute to John Coltrane. You know, he started out with Miles with two years and then went on on his own and unfortunately died in 1967 for the tragic short life. But so I hope you enjoy the next four tunes with the band. So go for it. Thank <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Let's hear it for the uh, Blue Note Ensemble. Kind of beautiful job. Let's hear it for Nick on the saxophone. Zach on the saxophone. And Ian on the guitar. And Jared on the bass. And Abe on the drums. And Morgan. I can't see you. That's why I missed you. Morgan on the piano. So these guys are great. And uh, if you loved it, come again. We're doing this. That's the entire both groups that played tonight will be playing Tuesday night in Morphy Hall at the university at 7.30. So get a chance to hear it again. And later in the semester, these guys will be doing another five tunes by Coltrane. So if you like Coltrane, pay attention, look on the website and check them out. So thank you again once again. And now you can put your stuff away and you guys can stand up and there's another tune. Oh yeah, one more tune, sorry. I don't have the song list with me, so. Well, with that preeminent, thank you to you guys. Go for the last one.
Thank you very much.